In today's video, I show you how to install and configure MariaDB. MariaDB is one of the most popular open source relational databases. It's made by the original developers of MySQL and guaranteed to stay open source. It is part of most cloud offerings and is the default in most Linux distributions. Let's get MariaDB set up and unraid. Before we get started, have you signed up to receive our newsletter? It's a monthly publication with Unraid news, written out guides, and more. Also, come join us on Discord. It's a growing community where you can post questions and answers to tech questions, along with just hanging out with like-minded people. Join now so you don't miss out. I've left links to both down in the description. Under Maria DB. All right, here we are on our main page in Unraid. First thing we're gonna do is go over to the Apps tab. Then in the search box, we're gonna look for Maria DB. Once the search results are back, you'll see it listed in a couple different spots. As you can see, I've got the MariaDB from the Linux servers repository that's already installed. I've used this on a different video in the past, but I'm gonna show you how to do just the database now. So if this is your first time installing MariaDB, this actions button here will say install. For me, I'm just gonna install a second instance just to show you how it works. All right, first thing here, the network type, I'm gonna change this from bridge to my custom alien proxy network. If you don't have a custom network already, then what you need to do is jump over to the terminal icon up here in the top right, click onto there, and then you type in a simple little command line, it's docker network create, and then the name that you want it to be. So in this case, mine is alien proxy, hit enter, it'll create the network, and then you can have it available for your containers. I already have it, so I'm just going to get rid of this, don't need it, exit out of here, if I can spell exit right, there we go. All right, now we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom here, and I'm going to expand show Docker allocations. All right, now we're going to search for port 3306, see if that's available. So I'm going to double click on it, hit Control F to use the uh, find feature within the browser. And it shows three results, one, two, scrolling down, and you'll find the third one is my other instance of MariaDB. Now this is turned off right now, so I'm just going to carry on with this video. Once I'm done with this video, I'll be deleting out this instance of MariaDB, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. The 3306, the default port, and it's nice if you can keep it on that because a lot of containers out there will be using that port number by default. So if you can keep it on that, that's the best thing to do. But if you have to change it, then you know you just go up to the top here, increment this number. I'd say you know go up one. So 3307. Once again, double click, highlight it, Control F, see if it's available, and it is. So you could you could do something like that. But it's best if you can keep it on the 3306, as like I said, it's the default port and most containers will default to that port. All right, next down, we've got the MySQL root password, and this, this password has to be pretty secure. You don't want anyone getting access to your databases. So I would, you know, get a strong password, put it in your password manager, you know, keep it keep it pretty strong, but I'm not gonna follow my own advice because this is a demo, and like I said, I'll be deleting this shortly. I'm just gonna use password. All right, going down to the MySQL database. Here it says a container variable is MySQL database. You want to specify the name of the database to be created, and this is only done one time. So it's the first time you run, it creates the database. So the way I like to handle databases is you have the database name the same as the container that you're installing. So if you're going to do one for like ROMM, which is what my other one's for, I would name that database ROMM. That way you know which database is which, which goes to which application or which you know container. Since this is the first time setting it up, and we're setting up MariaDB, I'm just gonna call this MariaDB. I'm not gonna use this database for anything, but it's just kind of a placeholder to get the database set up. You could use it. All right, jumping down to my SQL user, this is the user account. And once again, I like to keep the user the same as the database. So the container that I'm installing, once again, ROMM as example, ROMM would be the database name. And then the user, I would also do ROMM just so I know what the user is by default. This is MariaDB and it's the initial install. So that's what I'm gonna name the user. All right, next down, we've got MySQL password. This is gonna be the password for this user for this database. Once again, to keep it simple, I'm just gonna have it MariaDB. Don't recommend this in the in production. I have a stronger password, but just for the sake of this video to keep it easy for everybody, just gonna keep all three of these the same. I don't have any remote SQL stuff, so I'm going to scroll on down and we'll hide the Docker allocations just to clean that up. Then I'm going to hit done, wait for it to install. It's really quick. Then I'll hit done again. Let's jump over to our Docker tab. We'll find a MariaDB in the list here and I'll make sure that auto start is turned on. 
And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's a fairly easy one to get set up. If you need to manage your MariaDB database, check out my video on Adminer or Adminer. Not sure on the correct pronunciation of that one. If you know, let me know down in the comments. I'd like to know for sure. Either way, Adminer, Adminer, it's a full featured GUI database management tool. It's pretty fantastic. I'll leave a link in the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get early access to my videos and they are ad free and sponsor free. The link's down in the description. Until then, check out one of these videos next. And I'll see you in the next one.